It, it, I told them they had a lot. of end zone our game of the week after an impressive week one win over aberdeen shannon visits the houston hilltoppers a bunch of big storylines in that one we'll get to those in a minute starkville the yellow jackets they look pretty explosive but they had a big time test in west point tonight green wave looking to not start zero and two and knox city county out in columbus wcbi sports end zone show is brought to you by jacks Carl Hogan Toyota, Wade Incorporated, Southern Housing, and Clark Beverage Group. Welcome into week two of Endzone. Thank you so much to all of our sponsors, Jax, Carl Hogan Toyota, Wade Incorporated, Southern Housing. We really appreciate it. John Sokoloff and Gracie Barra hanging out with you. Grace, we had delays yet again, not because of heat, but because of field We're conditions. Battling all of the weather. Yep, battling I'm, the weather. I'm glad to be inside. Glad to be inside. Yep, my uh, my feet were, were a little wet. You had the boots. You were smart. I did get my rain boots. You were. You were. My but, rain coat, uh, my rain boots. That did not stop uh, me from getting grass all over myself. Sure. But you know, hey, it happens. Hey, look, you know, late night shower never. Uh, Never hurt anybody. I don't know how to go into our game of the week, but we're just going to do it. Uh, Shannon and Houston. <laughs> in... There was no good segue from that. None. And uh, the thing I was most excited about for this one was because it's still early in the year, and I was still trying to kind of figure out what each of these teams are. And, again, it's week two, so you're not going to find out everything. But uh, this one was definitely a little telling of, of where these teams stand, and I think both of them should be excited about where they're at. Yeah, definitely. First year head coach in Ken Tops at Shannon and then against Baylor Dampier, who was making history with Houston last year. So it's a really interesting challenge between both of them. Storyline I love from this game. Don't love that he tore his ACL last year. But Jalen Washington, awesome back for the toppers. Tore his ACL versus Shannon week three last year. It's the exact same game. So he gets to come back, play against him, hopefully do some awesome things. Yeah, and get a little healthier and stronger before he goes to Southern Miss as he uh, Definitely. committed to there. But let's get out to these highlights. WCBI's High School Football Game of the Week is brought to you by Carl Hogan Toyota in Columbus. Check out this brand new Toyota Crown. It got our young Cammie to Houston safe and sound. He says the windshield wipers worked wonders. Check out one and get one for yourself today. Why not? But how about we get to the ball game, shall we? Toppers sprinting out of that tunnel, hosting the Shannon Red Raiders, a rematch from the first round of the playoffs last year. Very first possession, third and long for Shannon. Trey Spurgeon. Going deep, his intended car target can't make the grab, but Degarius Clifton in the right place at the right time snags it That's awesome. for seven, giving the Raiders an early lead. They had a lot of this happen last week against Aberdeen as well. I know. Hey, better to be lucky than good sometimes. After a stop, Raiders back in scoring position, but the Houston defense comes up clutch. Douglas Jones and TJ Guido combine for the sack to give the ball back to the offense. Houston finally starts to get it rolling. Chris Parker, jet sweep, getting the edge. Finally brought down inside the 10 just a few plays later. Grace, Jalen Washington, your guy. Getting his revenge in this game. There we go, tying it up. Toppers wouldn't look back winning 28-14. Out to West Point. It Oof. was, yeah, it was a rainy you one. You're going to take a dip in that puddle? I almost got run over by some green wave guys here. A I lot don't know of, if we can get your workers comp. We'll see. A lot of hazards. First play of the game, Trey Petty. Long ball to Stanka. Throw of the year so far. I'm calling it. Seven yards, John. Amazing. Very first play of the game. Just like that, Yellow Jack is up 7 nothing. Green Wave with the ball, running it all the way to the red zone. And uh, Quintarian Tillman Evans handles the rest from there. 14 yards into the end zone. The extra point is no good, so they're down one point. Second quarter, fourth and one. Kanan Daniels needs one yard. He got way more. He's so explosive. <laughs> way more. Man. Three touchdowns tonight. Insane, over 200 yards. Take a 14-7 lead. Jackets back with the ball, and they can run it too. Jay Stevenson sneaks his way on in for six, all tied up at 14. But former Heritage Academy Pat. Former Heritage Academy Pat, look at you. Starkville gets the win, 39-28. to 
Big time. Big, Big time victory for the Jackets. Time. West Point 0-2, but they should not be panicking yet. Tupelo, South Haven. Let's do it. Rain delayed the start of the game. Yeah, changed the record. All right, early second quarter. Wave up 20-0. Jarquel and Witherspoon fields a punt. Nearly breaks it before being pushed out of bounds. Setting up the wave in great field position. They couldn't capitalize, but their defense, Grace. How good was it last year? Another just, you know, example of it being good when there. When I was there last the Saturday, interception on the very first play. I remember that. That was big time. Crazy. Back on offense, Quatero Middlebrooks with the run. 15 yards, first down. Then quarterback Jeremiah Harrell tossing it far side to Caleb Cockrell. Another first down. Harrell then finds Braylon Matthews. Touchdown, Golden Wave. 27 nothing at the half. They win it 40-7. to Grace, let's check out a score here. Oxford, Why don't we? South Panola, 31 to 14. They got the win. Winona, you were talking about the Tigers, man. I I'll was, be very I interested. I am high to, on the Tigers. I'll be interested to see what they look like against Choctaw County. I think that'll be a very good game Great this game. year. Could be game of the week. Speaking of good games, Knox City County, Columbus, 6 0 Tigers. Rain coming down again. Of course. Fourth and goal. Camario Taylor picked off. My goodness. Quentin Martin coming up with it. Takes it all the way to midfield and look man that's a big time defensive play it doesn't just give you the ball but it gives you a lot of momentum as well second quarter Falcons trying to drive fourth down trying to score chucking it to the end zone it's incomplete Knoxby County takes over Grace not quite the Trey Petty throw but I mean this one it's arguably just as good rolling to his left Kamario Taylor in the rain you couldn't have handed that ball off better that's amazing unreal Jadquist Clark that's a Tiger touchdown they're up 12-0 they ended up winning this one 28 to 16. Now back to Tupelo, but this is last night, clearly not raining. Amory football playing at home at Tupelo against Saltillo. First quarter, CJ Beasley drops back. Even Ward gets to the passer for the strip sack. Landon Jones scoops it up. Easy touchdown, extending the lead 10 0. Still in the first quarter, offense has turned to put some points on the board. Braden Moranto buys time in the pocket, finding a wide open Isaiah Smith. Panthers lead 17 nothing. Braden doing it on the baseball diamond and on the football <laughs> field. Second quarter. Maranto hits Elijah Spratt on the screen pass. Oh lets him gosh. do the rest. No one is catching him, John. No, absolutely not. Amory up by 24 now. The very next possession. This looks awfully similar to the time, but Smith is on the receiving end this time, and he turns on the Jets. Even throws up the peace sign for good measure, putting the Panthers up 31-0. Amory beats Saltillo 51-19. All right, Choctaw County, New Hope. It was 6-0 Chargers in the first. K.J. Cork, Grace, this is a very, very gutsy strategy. When you have the 11th ranked recruit in the what nation you as your receiver, you chuck it up to him and make him make the play. That was play. a nice throw, too. Yeah, it was a good throw, and Caleb Cunningham does the rest. Man, the five-star receiver for the Chargers. They go up 12-0. That's probably why he's got a million offers, I would say. Next drive for them. Same score, Jeremiah Miller gets it from over 40 yards out, gets to the sideline, and then shortly after gets to the end zone. Yeah, Tupelo. Unreal. 20 nothing. I know. 20 nothing. <laughs> chalked off after the two-point conversion was successful. And then look, you're Billy Joel. You're going to play piano, man. You're Chalk Talk County. You're going to give it to Caleb Cunningham. Play the hits, baby. 192 did you mean for that to yards. Kind of rhyme? I, I didn't, but it did. Caleb Cunningham with the touchdown. Choctaw wins it 40 to nothing. He had 192 yards and three scores. Pontotoc at South Pontotoc. Let's get to it. First quarter, Miller Finn has to scramble to get the throw off. And he is picked off by Drew Tudor. That'll stop the drive in its tracks. But the Warriors return the favor. Jackson Harmon looks to throw, but he's picked off by Jaden Bradley. Then a few plays later, the give is to Bradley and he... Going to turn on the Jets straight to the end zone. Extra point is good. Ponatok goes up 7-0. Early in the second, Noah Fleming with the 23-yard field goal for South Ponatok. Cuts the lead 7-3 to Warriors. But the Warriors come back and caps it off the drive with the Jacqueline Judon score. 14-3, Ponatok there. They get the win, 42-10. And Lafayette ended up topping Horn Lake tonight, 28 to 21. Big win there for the Commodores. All right, coming up next year on End Zone, the Louisville Power Cats got a big emotional win over West Point last week. Could they replicate that success against Neshoba Central? Itawamba, Caledonia, a game that went down to the wire, and Aberdeen 
taking on West Lounge. Don't go anywhere. Thanks for staying up with us. Week two of end zone here. North Pontotoc hosting Water Valley Vikings first possession. Quarterback Drew Winfen on the keeper. He picks up the first down, showing off some nice little legs there. And then Winfen's like, all right, I got it with my legs. How about I show off the arm here? Finds Dantez Cook and the Vikings knocking on the door. Don't worry, that's not someone, you know, you don't have to get up off the recliner. That wasn't someone at the front Cam's door. I know Cam's dog Milo would bark at that. That's right. Winfrey uh, finishes the drive with a seven-yard touchdown here. And 7 nothing Vikings. But the Blue Devils, Grace, they were determined to answer. Quarterback Tyler Richardson finds Isaiah Webb to keep those chains moving. And I'll let you know, uh, there was a lot of offense in this game. Jaden Morgan takes the snap, takes it to make it 7-6. PAT was no good. Blue Devils are down by one. They end up falling. North Pontotoc wins at 55-33. High scoring one. Yes. I hope you had the over. 87 and a half. I did. Thank you. Over to Louisville. Speaking of overs. Okay. Uh, Wildcats hosting a show of Central on a really rainy, soggy evening. Yep. Opening kickoff. Zarion Haynes returns it up the middle. Breaks a couple of tackles. 65 yards to Man. the house for the score. But don't get too excited. A flag's going to bring it back. A legal block below the waist. And that's just so sad to me because that was a lock for a top five play. I it think. was. It was. It was very impressive. Now, after a Louisville three and out, Neshoba Central with the ball, and Brian McDaniel gets the handoff, and he gets stuffed by that Power Cats defense. Louisville right back on off, and second down, Xavier Hunt gets the snap, rolls to the right, throws. Jacavius Goss drops the ball. Maybe got a little too excited. As he goes in the end zone later He's on. He's a talented kid. <laughs> Happens to all of us. Cedric Hunt attempting a field goal, but it's going to be no good. I promise there are points in this game because Louisville won 31-0. How about we get you some more points here? Itawamba, Caledonia. Cavaliers up 6-0. Quarterback Connor Black trying the QB sneak, but he is swarmed by a host of Indians. So now we'll go to the very next play. Black fumbling the ball here, but Charlie Sullivan scoops it up and takes it 60 yards. I don't think you drew it up that way. No. But you know what? You'll you're take gonna it. You're not going to be mad. You're not going to you're not going to be mad about that. No doubt. 13 nothing after the point after. And then the ensuing possession for the Indians. Quarterback Ja Wood throwing a quick pass to Caden Prestage, but he's quickly tackled by Caledonia's Avery Hodge. But the Indians didn't let that stop them, Grace. Two plays later, Wood taking a snap, dropping back Taking a couple steps up, drops a dime to Cooper Waddle for the first touchdown, making the score 13 to 7. But Caledonia ends up winning this one 23 to 21. Let's get some more scores in here. We're Let's going. do it. New Albany, the Bulldogs winning it 31 to 11. I believe they are now 2 0 on the year, so big time win for them. Congrats and now, where Coach do we Stubblefield. go? Hamilton. Hamilton, that's right. Late first quarter. Ball snapped, given to Hamilton's Ja'Cory Miller, and he's met instantly by Nettleton's Jordan Fields for a loss. Next play, Justin Verner hands it off to Trent Jones, finds a hole, shakes a few defenders, takes it to the five-yard line for the Lions. Two plays later, Verner gets the ball, and he's just going to punch it in from Why the one-yard line. Easy Gives money. the Lions the lead. Next drive for Nettleton, Braylon Williams takes the snap, makes some magic happen, shaking defenders, picking up a huge The stop and go, down. man. And the he almost runs into Desmond, go. but yeah, he doesn't. But I hope Desmond's okay. Next play, Williams tries to make some more magic happen with his legs, dances off a couple defenders before being hit, and uh, the ball's going to come out. Oh. <coughs> Very unfortunate for Tough them. Scene. But you know what? John Keith and company, they're pretty good. Yeah, Nettleton ends up getting the win, so they're fine. 41-22, the final score. All right, let's check in on my guy Alex Williams here. Aberdeen Westlands after a short punt. Maurice Howard passes to Justin Payne for the touchdown. Aberdeen cheerleaders were loving it. Great dance routine there, too. Nice run here. Aberdeen's Don Gillian trying to just keep things going for this offense. Last week, they had a tough loss. This team looked to the, tonight to me, Grace, that they were, you know, trying to avenge that loss and show, hey, we're, we're pretty good. And now, John Ivana Edwards to Antonio Touchdown. Brown. Two-point conversion for the Panthers was no good, but this was all Aberdeen winning it 36-12. to 12. All right, some more scores here. Let's do it. 
East Webster over Nanawoya, 41 to seven. Boonville taking down Baldwin in the Skunk Bowl. You might need to bathe in tomato juice to get that uh, that <laughs> stench out there. 34 to 26. Moorville topped East Union, 39 to 14. And we will be back here on end zone. You pour up, looking to avenge the loss to East Webster against French Camp, Smithville Hatley, in uh, in a pretty fun one. And then Center Point in Aliceville will be dipping in to some West Alabama coverage. Don't go anywhere. End zone continues next. Welcome back to End Zone. French Camp, you pour a grace. What do you say we do some highlights? Why don't we? You down? All right, cool. Let's get to it. Silas Hodge here for French Camp Academy after a tough loss last week. Getting to the outside, cutting back inside. Nice little game there. And it looked like Eupora kind of avoided some bad weather, at least while we were there. You know, I'm very jealous. Yeah, same. After the punt, a fumble recovered here by Kaysen Sheridan. Turnover action. Then Logan Wright was looking for his target, and it's going to be Noah Drew. Is he going to be able to haul it in? Let's I mean, see. right away. Throw a little behind him, but still, man. What a catch. Looks, looks like there were some, uh, some Velcro on his hands just hauling that <laughs> one in. You Pora fans, we know they're going to be rowdy. That's not exactly breaking news here. You Pora quarterback Trey I Johnson. I know. Here's something you didn't know. Trey Johnson uh, ran for a touchdown right here. Wow. And How I'll, many yards? That seemed like a lot of yards. We don't know the exact figure, but I will tell you that it was um, almost a top five play. Who knows? It'll be a nominee. And uh, Eupora ended up winning this one. How about that? How about a final? I think people Great care about that. Great bounce back win for Eupora. Big time. Vardaman, oh, man. Out to Vardaman. Looks it was wet. raining. I don't know how that affects the sweet potatoes. Bruce trailing 14-7 to in the third. Eric Sosa takes the direct snap. Shows off some patience, hits the hole. Can't quite get to the house, but Bruce could not capitalize. The Rams back on offense. Ethan Parker goes long for Bryson Moore. Makes the sliding grab. Keeps those chains moving. On the very first play of the first, fourth quarter, Bentley Hamilton shows off the power. Trucking his way into the end zone. Makes it 20-7. to seven. Love those unis. I said it before, I'll say it again. You're a big uniform connoisseur. Bruce isn't going down quietly, though. J. Cole Williams decides to do it himself. Reaching for the pylon, but he is called short. Oh. Trojans converted on the very next play, and Vardaman wins 27 to 13. Now, another dry game, so you can guess this one was last night. Smithville at Hatley. First quarter, Tigers take over after an interception. Kaysen Williams on the handoff, breaks away down the side for a touchdown. 50 yards to the end zone. Two point conversions good. Tigers take an 8 0 lead. Next drive, Chandler Burnetti. Hits Barker O'Brien, breaks some ankles, and he takes it 20 yards for the first down, putting him in great scoring position in Smithville. Going for it on fourth and goal. Brunetti looks left, nothing there, looks right, still nothing there, so he's just going to say, I'll do it myself. Who knows how many reads were on that play? Yeah, I saw his first eyes. First read, no, everywhere. second, third. <laughs> They're down, though. Two point conversion was no good, so it's 8 6. Uh, and Casey Williams. Again, making it look too easy. Brought down at the one yard line. Very next play, he does it himself. 14 to six Hatley, and Hatley gets to keep the trophy. Taken down, Smithville 39 to 13. All right, more scores. Calhoun City 22, Oklahoma nothing. Potts Camp top and Myrtle on Thursday night, 14 to 13. North Point Christian over TCPS, 49-14. Heritage Academy falling at Biggersville, 33-13. Kemper County top and Knox of Pater, 45-6. You're not going to want to go anywhere because, Grace, we're going to have some NAIS highlights and we're going to get into West Alabama as well. It's all next. We're not even tired, so you shouldn't be either. We'll see you after the break. The bad weather theme was prominent for Oak Hill Academy at Columbus Christian. And when it rains, Grace? It pours. It pours, but you also run oh. the football. Boston Cunningham. <laughs> Moving the chains a little, but I got to tell you, I was out here, and while I was there, there wasn't much of the offense scoring. Rams back in their own territory here, deep in it. Emilian Foster backing up into the end zone, chucks one up. His sideline was screaming, no, and it's picked off. Cole Knighton returns it for six. Raiders up eight zip after the two-point conversion. Same score in the second. Welton Davidson trying to pitch it to Hill, but Will McBrayer sees it coming. He breaks it up, 
returns it to the house for a touchdown. 16 0 Oak Hill. They ended up winning this one 36 zip. Now over to Winston Academy Patriots hosting Lamar. Second quarter, no score. Lamar's ball. Wyatt Bond gets the snap, rolls to his left, pump fakes, finds a wide open trip. Morrow. That's a heck of a play. But he drops the oh, football. Heading great into throw. The end zone. Great throw, I yes, should say. Winston's me. ball now. Holder Tidwell on the keeper, and he gets some nice yardage out of it. Later on, Omar Scott going to get the handoff up the middle, breaks the tackle. He's up the sideline and gets pushed out of bounds with a nice run for the first down. That would end the first half with no score, but I got a final score for you. Lamar wins it 17-0. All right, quick score updates. Starkville Academy topped Carroll Academy 35-7. Kemper Academy beat Hebron Christian 28 to nothing as well. Let's go out to West Alabama. Fayette at Sullivan. The Sullivan defense, Grace. Defense wins championships, it wins games, and right here, it wins a little bit of a drive. It makes Fayette County get some little nothing. So now let's see the Blue Devils on offense. Andrew Lowe, 55 yards. The stop and cut always gets me. I mean, when these kids, it shows just how athletic they are. I thought he was going to be out of bounds. The balance, he scores a touchdown. And Sullivan ended up winning this game. They got it done over Fayette County. So let's, let's keep things rolling here. Center point at Aliceville. QB Thurman Moore finds Jacoby Bursby on the slant. Oh. Well, one more score before we get in there. That's, that's you know, I got um, excited. South Lamar over Holy Spirit Catholic 41 to nothing. And Lamar County over Phil Campbell 42 to 6. And Gordo fell to Bibb County 33 to 13. Pickens County top brilliant 28 nothing. And that's it for now. Coming up next, we'll have our winners of the night. Stay with us. Grace, team of the night. Yellow Jackets. Big win over West Point, Knoxby County. First win of the season at Columbus. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week. WCBI Sports End Zone Show is brought to you by Jax, Carl Hogan Toyota, Wade Incorporated, Southern Housing, and Clark Beverage Group.